I got a, a secret, super secret. A lot of people don't know this. But if you're looking for torque, you want the most torque out of your tool, then when you're hitting something, if it's quieter, it's not hitting as hard. Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop in my one man mission to make gentlemen the new guys. Today, a treat especial. They can't all be treats especial. And yet, here it is. Uh, Milfucky fool hydraulic driver what we're gonna give what for and how to and how to get there I ask that you humor me just pause the unboxing guys as I'm saying I've been losing a step I'm working on I'm, I'm working on getting better back in fighting form I'm gonna introduce to you Forkula key or tack Little stumble at the start gate. I don't trust this thing. So I'm shutting her doing park brake, orn, <laughs> or in the orn position. Transmission neutral. Clutch disengaged. Implements neutral. Key orn tact. I can't see. Oop. Let's see how that do. Uh, I'll, I'll reiterate to you, realistically, it's not about time, it's about style. It's not the prettiest sprinter, rather it's not the quickest sprinter what gets the Nike sponsorship, it's the prettiest one. Time! I wasn't planning a fact to do the did on this uh, Milfucky because I've been doing quite a few of them right off the hop, but if you look back here, in the mizzen heap, <laughs> mizzen heap. I get confuculated from the back, uh, shaking my fist at the kids from the poop deck. The midden heap at the back of the shop, we got some ramps, what we're making for uh, Seth's bikes hacks. We're gonna, it's gonna cost me an arm and a dick to ship these, but hey, yeah, uh, sweet, sweet, what do you call those, collaboration. Uh, you know, you get nearly a thousand subscribers. Look at this, look at this. I, uh, I almost got a real blister from putting one of these things together already. So I figured we'd give this thing a hot supper with it. Did you catch that? Likely not. I blame the diesel, diesel fitter. Ah, uh, my eyes, these fucking goggles do nothing. Probably should have filtered that through a cigarette or something. This is a hydraulic driver. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And we had the rigid apart, and I do won't believe I ever got her back together. It's, it's sitting in the midden heap of the shop, stratifying. It's uh, probably all the parts are still there, but it's been a you know if the if the kabouches if the gnomes don't get to it uh, quick enough on the healing bench, then it just sort of renders into the general. You get the idea. You hear that? The OCD types going fucking bananas. I don't know much about our partner. 
I know what I like, and I know good art is supposed to make you feel something. Itchy. That's something. <laughs> I'll, I'll clean it up. I'm just, some days, man, I'm just barely getting by. Uh, as a secondary primary caregiver of two young children, you'll recognize this. I got PTSD. Other parents know this. Because I blocked it out. I don't even remember my little babies being little babies. It's clearly just surviving here. And don't give me any of that fucking uh, uh, clean your room nonsense. You ever seen that guy's fucking... <laughs> his overheads? Jesus Christ. It's like they're planning a Mars mission or something. I know there's abstraction and so forth. You got to be fairly smart to get that high level of abstraction. But, jeez, it's like you, you go into a meeting or you, you go and meet the superintendent of a, a big operation and, you know, getting paid a quarter million bucks a year or something like that. And he's pulling one of these San Francisco typist, Hunt and Pecker. Holy fuck, the most expensive emails in history. The mind boggles. I feel like the preamble was maybe a little excessive. So what we'll go ahead and do in the next video, we'll have a look at the... Kidding. Okay. All right. Here we... Oh, and the NSA tracking boys are on to us. Look at this pain in the cant. Oh, woe betide the poor tool maker would have had to do the draft angle on that. So how would they have machined that? That tool, you see how thin that, holy, that cross section is. That feature, there's only one way to do that, and that's uh, electronic dance musically. They get the, the angry pixies in there on a graphite probe and, and plunge in, and it erode away the tool steel of the mold. And that's strictly, that's the most expensive feature on this entire thing, and that's strictly. For allowing the NSA to track us. Alexa, mail urethral expanders. You see, this is as close to art as we get in industrial facilities. So in this case, we have a beautiful exemplar of the, the height of mold making technology. Look at this. So they've broken off, just attention to detail, right? They've broken off the edges where the battery goes and where the human touches everything else is still quite sharp but measures have been taken to to have a human touch lots of through hole affixation for the uh, tps and tsb and sebs and all that looks like they're blending it as possibly uh, mitigation for attack by acids and corrosives and uh, the other one sullivan's Looking at the mold now, of course, this is, it would be in a rotary mold. It would, it would shoot this plastic and then move to another mold to shoot this over molding. And the ejection pins are waffled. I wonder now if that's not to keep it in place uh, on the pins so that it can move to the next station. Not entirely sure. This is beautiful in here. Some silicone bumpers stuck right in there to uh, minimize the vibration from the uh, high-speed rotation of the brushless motor. This is a nice part, and this, this is very likely the most expensive bit of plastic you'll ever see. Little brass insert for the sky hook here, and looks like they haven't welded that after the fact. It hasn't been heat welded in after the fact. It's actually been molded in there because it looks like there's some flashing over top of it, just a, a wee little bit. And the detail is, it's beautiful detail in there. You notice they added two pins so that your sky hook doesn't weeble wobble around if that fastener gets a little bit loose. The bore for the bearing, tiny little bearing, but quite a bit of material there, nylon, in order to strengthen it up, stiffen it up. We're not seeing any kind of cheaperies on the clam itself. Not a whole lot to see on the pixie path, unfortunately. Molded, nice beefy connection here, a terminal strip for the batteria. The only PCB board we can see 
is uh, this guy, the indicator and uh, the torque settings. Uh, we got seven, seven wires, four connections. So that'd be five, four positives and negative. And then I guess they're running two wires to this little tactile switch. A little bit of wires and we see all the control here in brain box re-switching in a potted component, taking the DC and swapping it out to, uh, to send pulses of DC into this three phase brushless motor. The switch itself seems to be, oh, there we got some data on it. Chinese brand with the French name, but they've gone away from that ubiquitous iron oxide red color. And look at the plunger here. They've added some rails in order to scoop them fact up. Uh, you cannot do that with a regular switch which just got the regular plunger because it, it'll twist right off. And this is making and breaking full battery voltage, but also sending out uh, an analog signal to tell you what speed it wants to be run at. Now on to the Motorb. And we see on the Rotorb a tiny, tiny little bearing probably quite high speed, but it does come with a genuine circlip for retention. There is no mechanical connection, no physical, there's probably a fluid connection, but there doesn't, well, doesn't appear to be because there isn't a mechanical met, solid metal connection, either dogs and cogs or a hammer and anvil betwixt the motor and the hitting end. There is a detent, however, So there is something going on in there other than straight hydraulic, some sort of detent device. Here's the permanent magnet rotor, unbelievable power density. You see the size of it. I mean, it's just teeny tiny. It's been balanced and then drilled out just with a regular old spotting drill, a bi-directional fan. So the input pinion or output pinion, depending on which uh, side you're looking at is a metal injection molded part, but it has been touched up after the fact precision ground in order to fit in the bore of the back bearing of this power head. I, uh, I hesitate to call it a power transmission, but it does have some gears in there. So despite being hydraulic, there is still some gear reduction thinking about it you'd expect that because very likely this little brushless dc motor is spinning a thing in at 30,000 ripples. so hot on a seat have a look at my thumbnail you will note a small piercing wound bloodied at the hands of one of these guys just the other day and uh yeah now I'm scared. <laughs> Whew, safety squint. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, a spring of a thing. Jesus. That's like, <laughs> like a punji trap. And another spring of a thing. This one's backed by a kind of an oddball retention preload. custom wound spring for that just to get that ball up in the slot where it's got to go there we go we'll just throw that right in the bucket bucket never to be found again why even bother pretending? On the front side of this case, casement, surprisingly rough die casting using A180 bog standard aluminum uh, alloy for cold injection. This, uh, this would have about 10%, uh, what you call it, silicone for high, better nucleation, about 3% copper, 3% zinc, a little bit of iron in there, 11 herbs and spices. The, the colligative properties are very important when you're, well, that is the, 
the change in state properties when it goes from liquid to solid are very important and we put in the to my understanding the silicone silicon in there to allow it to to form smaller grains nice small grains and then the other alloying elements are essentially to fit in between the crystals of the metal itself and give it a little extra stiffness uh, this is good for just about you'll see this alloy in just about everything because it's good at uh, not hot cracking it's good easy to mold and so forth they have a urethane bush on the outside i guess you call that a bumper or a uh, friction sleeve something like that i don't urethane i it's clear so it's gonna start looking it'll yellow and then it'll start looking real nasty like a old used rubber so i'm not sure the kind of longevity you're going to get out of that but it is a bumper so it will absorb some impacting they got a fair size bearing on the outboard here and it's sealed so that's nice at least you don't get the uh, dead tree carcass jammed in your balls always a danger when you're fondling dead things yeah it's a deep groove ball bearing with uh, an inner race and outer race and uh, the uh, cage between it this is a real weird uh, is razor sharp in there for cooling or i don't know i would assume that the heat sinking just goes straight through and then the fan takes care of some of the cooling but there is you can get some well no that fits in there real good there's not going to be much airflow you're just worried more about your your they're using convective cooling in order to cool this off. But that is, that's an odd feature, hideous. Sharp, I don't know what it could be. I guess you hide, oh, okay. It's to get the fastener down in there. Now wouldn't it be nicer if they just had one of these, a little tab, and they could uh, screw right into some metal. That'd be nice. But instead, they got that. So this little cut in the casement is odd, but you look and a bloody great bearing stove in sight. Look at the size of the cork stuffer. Our cracked four pounders we made to fight. This, um, there's no mechanical connection. I think I done told you that before. But so this has to be spinning a thing and at a certain speed in order to make up for any internal fluid losses and get enough pressure in there to get this to twack. So we're not going to be able to get that turning unless we unless we're really speedy. So I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to get this back together. Yeah, you got the pick out again. Doesn't seem to want to move. You very likely if this thing stops hitting as hard as it should. I don't think you'd be buying this. You'd have to buy this whole component and then you look at the price of spare parts you know, like to just buy a brand new unit rather than replace this one welcome to the world of engineered obsolescence not just the confuser anymore it's also got hydraulic components which you can't replace yay okay well we have released the schmoo it doesn't seem to want to come what we can do here is take what off we can we know we can that doesn't do anything that bearing is pressed on we are rapidly losing this thing's lifeblood i think i might use an old that's leaking that means it's leaking out that means we have porting we we'll use an old indian trick uh i misspoke an old blonde trick we're gonna blow on it Carefuling. Come on. Fuck me. Oh, what a heady bouquet that is. A fine, acrid aroma of hydrocarbon. Hmm. 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 And you see here to get to, to the parts stack up batman focus you fuck this guy this fucking guy it's 
like he doesn't even know how to make vajayas. Okay. Appears to have some treads. So if it's got treads, that means it'll untread. Now the uh, astute amongst us will note as the witness marks indicate, I had a go at this already and she ain't coming a part. And also very likely if I get too deep into her, she ain't going back together. I want to use this tester, but this is interesting. The casement is hardened. Now why would they go through the, these Nipex jaws ain't no joke and they ain't even touching it. Why would they go through the expense of hardening that component? It's got to be to mitigate the damage done by cavitation. Cavitation, of course, is the vapor, the, the pressure inside the fluid drops so low that it turns from a liquid to a vapor. That's not what causes the damage. It's the implosion of those microscopic vapor bubbles that they implode supersonically and they take a tiny chunk of metal out every time they implode and over time that uh, creates damage. You see that in diesel engine liners. You see that on uh, boat propellers. Just to make sure it's not sinister threaded. They sometimes do that just to fuck you like this. Yeah. So I know if I get any deeper into it, it ain't ever going back together. And I want to use this to test it out. So we'll put some additional fluid in there and get her back together and give her a go. I filled it one dram at a time. And it took me a fucking lifetime. You'll know it's me when I come. Hey, that's working. Just took a little of the old ultraviolence. In, out, in, out. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Say no more, say no more. You'll know it's me when I come through Christmas time. Can't go to a decent thought up rhyme to. It's called building the suspense in this day and age, also known as losing your viewership to something more interesting. I think this old Tony just uploaded. You better check. Here's the field winding here. On the back of the motor is the PCB for the Hall effect sensors, the Hall effect sensors. There you can see coated in. It's elastic. Just measuring the magnetic field of each one of those. And interestingly, there is some additional silastic in there. It looks like silicone, but it's only on every second winding. So I initially thought that maybe there was a temp sensor or something in there, but no, it's just on every second winding, which happens to coincide with the location of the fasteners. So I'm not quite sure why they'd only do those three but they clearly had a reason for it all of the soldering looks good bit of elastic bit of conformal coating keep in the, the big chunks of water out all the wires in there all potted in there so you're not really going to damage this all that much by i think you damage the bearings more than anything by uh, submersing this in water or exposing it to a spray of water or what have you the forward reverse button it's directly on the top of the switch itself. It doesn't have a jutted out actuation switch lever. There's nothing untowards in this whole assembly, really. Now she's going back together reasonably well, as reasonably as can be expected on my account, but it's something we haven't seen before. It's a high voltage. No, we've seen it on hair dryers and things that move air is a high voltage uh, bleed down. This is the ground and it goes in the casement. It's not attached to any conductive material, but it is attached to the case. So that, that's gotta be for very high voltage. Uh, I'm mistaken, it does ground to the case, maybe to protect the bearings, but then if they were worried about the bearings, they wouldn't make it ground through the bearings. Eh, it's gotta be there for a reason. And it must have something to do with rather than being, well, that it's a brushless motor. So it's changing uh, the magnetic field quite rapidly. Maybe some hysteresis or some eddy current or something, something there. Creating high voltage that they want to dissipate. Unfortunately, my scientist smock is at the dry cleaners. Reasons. Well, we got the Unity DB meter in the C rating uh, slow. 
and we'll let it get back down to normal. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. If you got glare in your eye, just cock your head over. Let's see. There we go. Running about 89 right up against your ear. So if and you, you had it right up against your ear, you'd need some ear hole pluggers. This guy. Got a higher top note. Yeah. 3 dB more, well, 6 dB more is, no, 3 dB more is double the sound. But to my ear, doesn't sound all that much different. Now, I got a, a secret, super secret, a lot of people don't know this. But if you're looking for torque, you want the most torque out of your tool, then when you're hitting something, if it's quieter, it's not hitting as hard. Now remember, I did just take this A part and release the schmoo. So maybe the factory schmoo got some magic juice in it. Yeah, you know, who could say? But all things being equal, I also took A part some other ones recently. Oh, sorry about that. Mics aren't made for actual work. Okay. So we're going to compare it to the uh, Borsch, which I think is an A Borsch on. However, it, it twacks pretty hard and it's brushless. I also have a uh, Makita non-brushless, but apples to tomatoes, we'll do brushless on brushless. Now uh, hopefully you can see everything. We'll just start off with the Borsch. Reasons. Well, that twacks pretty good. We're peeking out at 112, looks like decibels. That's plenty to damage your hearing. Much quieter. Peaks out at 102. Now, of course, this is wholly unscientific. When they actually do the DB ratings, they, there's a whole procedure. Uh, we're not following that. We're just sticking the machine there and seeing what pops up. Doesn't seem to be nearly as fast. That's just in Sitka spruce, mind. Okay, here's a two, 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 two and a half incher. Oh, that's slower than cold molasses in January. 96 peaked out at and that's right so that's quite quiet but it's still above the level where you should be wearing hearing protection so yeah i know car painters they're tough guys they don't want to hear in their old age anyway but <laughs> for the rest of us yeah. this is starting to shape up at the risk of sounding like a shill this is shaping up as a solid Meh. <laughs> Sadly, we didn't let the smoke out. However, she didn't make the full pull, and not for any reason other than, well, yeah, we got the full chooch. Just wanted to show you that. Other than, you know, I got a four inch exhaust. I want to be rolling coal. Not, uh, this thing has a very special usage case. If you want a quieter machine. However, I generally want a louder machine because you can tell it chooches faster. Oh, the young fella, the shop lackey mind was keeping right up. Now normally, well, the only time he can run rings around my rung is doing the old Instagram swipe. Otherwise, I got him beat all the, you know, young fellas nowadays. But I had to pick this up in order to maintain my five to one fastener ratio. Now, I changed my verdict from solid meh to absolute fucking garbage unless you want a tool that hits softer and is quieter in which case this is the tool for you spanks for watching keep your dick in a vice or taco i don't judge gentlemen welcome back to the shop in my one man mission to make gentlemen the new guys um an all-inclusive
catch-all. Not the patriarchal secret handshake dog whistle of your, my what, <laughs> exactly. Because the opposite of patriarchy is not matriarchy, but fraternity. I learned that from a early 90s Senator O'Connor album, Partners. Those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it. In my case, not once, not twice, but thrice times. Apparently the Vietnam War had nothing to do with the fact it takes a decade to grow latex plantations. And uh, the Firestone Rubber Corporation was all in on French Indochina. Clearly, <laughs> the former GM of Ford, Robert McNamara, would have no ulterior motives for thwarting the Red Menace. Bread and circuses for all. <laughs> yeah, so with no small irony, I point out the Lions. One of the few National League uh, football, foosball, owned by a lady, Martha Firestone Ford, daughter of the Firestone Tire Empire and married to none other than the grandson of Henry Ford himself. Hey, <laughs> and now you know the rest of this. Hey, that's not on Wikipedia. It's been nice knowing you boys. Good or as new.